Hello everyone, welcome to another tutorial of MongoDB series. My name is Jairaj and thanks for joining again. So till now we have discussed the introduction of MongoDB and how to install them in Windows as well as Mac. And in this tutorial we will discuss some of the tools such as MongoDB Server, Mongo Shell and MongoDB Compass. So let's get started. In previous tutorial we have installed MongoDB in our local and uh, we have started it by using MongoD command in case of Windows and in case of Mac we use this brew command something like this. And after starting Mongo server when we connect this Mongo server with Mongo shell using this Mongo command something like this we can see that it is giving us some IP address and some port number here. So this IP address is obviously the local host because we are running this process in our local and it is giving this port number which is 27017 which is a default port number. So I mean to say is this particular command started some process or more precisely some daemon process and that process is communicating by network port. And this process interact with incoming commands and stores data in our uh, data location. So if you remember in our previous tutorial we created data location in uh, in case of Windows we use C drive for that and in case of Mac we use our root location. So this server process receives commands over network and gives response back. And for network communication this process uses MongoDB wire protocol which is very simple TCP IP binary protocol over network communication. So this process will be listening from this network port and the client can connect and give commands to this process via this port, via this protocol and this process will do some uh, operation over there. So at the time of read and write operations, this process will communicate with something called storage engine in our Mongo and that storage engine will do the storage procedures. So in Mongo we have two storage engine for different use cases and default one is wired tiger storage engine. And this engine determines and manage how to store data. So for example, this engine manages data compression. And we know that this compression is very important to reduce data storage size. And also this engine uses block compression. That means it compresses data in the block of some fixed size. And additionally, this storage engine also handles concurrency to handle multiple read and write requests. It also handles logging, it handles memory usage and other services. So this Mongo server or this daemon process can do configuration of all of these features. So for example, we can change port number, we can change data location, authentication related parameters or we can change logging, replication and sharding configurations. So here at the very bottom we have this data location and then we have data storage engine and on top of that we have this core engine server. But someone needs to communicate with this core server and sends commands over network. And for that we use this Mongo shell. So Mongo shell is an interface from where user can communicate with server and it was originally developed in JavaScript. So and we can start this Mongo shell by Mongo command and here we need to pass IP address, we need to pass the host and port location, we need to pass authentication related information. But here we are using local database with default settings so we don't need to pass any of this only Mongo command will work. So if I hit this it is it will connect with our Mongo server. So if I fire some commands here, that commands will go via that port number and reach to that server and server will respond back via this same port number. So with this Mongo shell, we can do two kinds of operation. We can do simple read and write operations such as creating a database or collection or some documents. So let's say if I do show DBs, then it will give me the list of all the databases available at the uh, server side. And let's say I want to use this test database. And if I do this show collections, and it will give me the list of collection which is available inside that test database and I can add uh, documents here I can remove the documents and that kind of basic operations and the second type of operation that I can do here is administrative operations such as sharding replica set configuration and some stuff like that so database administrator or DBA use this Mongo shell to manage Mongo server and other configuration because if you think logically most of the data read and write operations can be done by applications only and this application use Mongo drivers for the communication purpose. But Mongo shell can be used by this DBA to manage internal configuration of the entire database. And this application, this third party application or we can say Java or Python application uses Mongo driver for communication. 
and these drivers can communicate directly with the server via these port numbers. So this way we can use this Mongo shell for various purpose. And another tool that we are going to talk about is Mongo Compass. So at the time of installation, installation prompt asks us to install this. But if you don't have it in your system, you can go to our MongoDB website and you can download it from here. So MongoDB Compass is a GUI for MongoDB and it also communicates with server over network. And with MongoDB Compass, we can see our data visually. We can fire query, we can understand our data, we can understand the schema of our data. So here I have uh, MongoDB Compass open and let's say I want to connect it. So here I'm going to pass individual information and host name is localhost and port number is 27017 and we don't have any authentication for now. So if I do connect, it is connecting. And here as you can see, we have this test database that we created and inside that test we have books, we have employee. And if I go inside this books collection, then I can do various things here i can do aggregation i can do i can see my documents i can fire my queries and let's say i, I go inside this schema and i i can analyze my schema so this schema information gives me the information about my data what kind of data i have so as you can see here we have diff ids and this this is the different kind of ids we have there is no value which is repeating and inside class we have two values one is string value and another is undefined value and uh, another field we have is author and uh, 95% of the time it is error and 5% of the time it is undefined. So this way we can see what kind of information we have, what are the different values which is coming and what kind of value it is. It is a link URL or it is a repetitive value. So many things we can analyze here. We can create our query also here. So let's say I want something like this. If I click here, then it, it will create some of the queries automatic here. So this way we can see our data visually and we can see what is actually happening with our data. And additionally, we can optimize our query. So this query optimization means we can test our query and see how much time it is taking to execute. So for example, we have some huge query, some filtration and aggregation is there and some complex query is there. And we want to analyze that query is taking how much time. Then we can put that query here and we can analyze which part of the query is taking much time. And we can modify that part to make that query faster. And additionally, we can manage indexing here. So we will discuss this feature in detail in upcoming videos because these are a very huge topic of discussion. We will discuss these features in details in upcoming videos and uh, these are very basic uh, information about few tools of the MongoDB. But MongoDB Incorporation as a company, they provide so many important tools and services. So if you go to their section here in documentation, if I go in tools, we have so many different kind of tools here. We have this BI connector, we have charts, we have compass, we have Kafka connector and many other things. So all of these tools we can use for different purpose in our project. And additionally, Mongo provides some services which is very useful such as Mongo Atlas or Mongo Realm or Mongo chart. So point here I'm making is MongoDB is not just a database. They provide so many services, so many tools, which is very useful in real world. So when you are starting learning about MongoDB, don't stop after finishing the all the basics and CRUD operations of the MongoDB. Keep learning about this Mongo and their different tools and services they offer because the combination of this database and with these different tools and services makes overall package of Mongo uh, very useful in our real world applications. So that's all for now in this tutorial and in next tutorial we will set up mongodb atlas so don't forget to like share and subscribe and see you in next one till then keep learning thank you very much